Welcome to Thursday the 20th. GQ dropping in for you, and we're hindcasting here going back to last weekend. I wanted to show you a nearby fetch that was on our side of the 180 Dateline right here, about 1,200 miles away from us, situating right here about 20 degrees north. And as we show you the animation, that fetch really got close to the islands, about 800 miles away. And that jammed up some north-northwest period as in swell. It was a short period swell of 14 seconds, short distance away, allowing for some 6 to 8, maybe even a few bigger sets to pull in from this guy right here. And I wanted to show you something else that starts to form as this guy leaves our window and brings trade winds up in that 15 to 30 mile per hour range. The strong high pressure here in conjunction with the lows moving around. The pressure gradients have allowed 15 to 30 and even up to 40 knot trade wind, especially for the big island. Let's take a look up here in the central Aleutians. You see this large spinning loop. That gyra has at its surface a series of fast moving low pressures going zonal here. Now they're spaced only a day or two apart on the south edge of that gyra and they're getting absorbed into the, the mother low up here and I'll click in the animations and show you that, but that phenomenon is called the Fujiwara effect and the surface systems that are too fast moving and making it, making for limited fetch durations. And this go, gives below average surf on the North shore, you know, pretty much through Saturday, but then things look up really good for Sunday and Monday. And Monday, of course, is the kickoff for the Vans World Cup of Surfing at Sunset Beach. So let's take a look at that Fujiwara effect. You see how that big spinner gets up here? Well, as time moves on, we, we get a decent fetch right here that's going to be pulling in some 8, maybe even up to 10-foot surf for Sunday, Monday. Let's take a look at the current models, though, before we get that far. So this is Wednesday the 19th. I'm recording this, and you'll probably get up and see it on Thursday the 20th. This is one of the low pressures that will pulse us up to, you know, 4 feet, maybe 5 feet for Thursday. That thing will fade out a little bit on Friday. It's all part of that Fujiwara phenomenon. We start in the animation. You can see that builds up into the gulf, but it's out of our swell window. Here comes the guy right here on Friday. That should pull us up to some really good waves for the kickoff of the second jewel of the Vans Triple Crown. That fetch right there is pretty broad, and it gets some follow-up too. And you see that weak low. It tracks towards us with a captured fetch, and that could bump us up next week to heights of maybe two to four feet. Clicking in the animations a little bit further, you can see another storm coming down off the eastern Aleutians on Tuesday the 25th. Now, add a you know three or four days for this to get to us, and we could be looking at some building surf on Sunday the 30th. Hopefully, that thing will bring us up to you know, six to eight feet, but it's a little early to forecast or claim that. Now let's take a quick gander at the South Pack going back a week ago, Wednesday the 12th. And the reason why we have a little background 15 second Tasman sea swell is because of this fetch right here in the Taz that lasted quite a while, brought great waves to Fiji and just brought two foot sets to us very infrequently, but at least up to two feet with those longer periods. And since we've had a series of north winds, northeast winds, town has had some fairly decent conditions. That guy fades out, it is gone, and we go into quite the quiet period. Now, we do have some activity down here, but all of it's just fairly zonal in the flow of the track of these lows, and the swells are all pretty much just a foot, even though it might be back around 14 or 15 seconds. We're not getting much more than two feet out of that, and that would be for next week, and that could bump up us up to two feet. Continuing in the animations further, you can see another system that tries to come into the Tasman Sea, but the track is not optimal. There may be some 1 foot 16 seconds out of this from the Tasman Sea, but we're just scraping here as we slither into their austral summer and things go quiet. Taking you into the current date, 19th and 20th, a little bit of storm activity down here. Uh, nothing to write home about. Again, as I said, all just background stuff. I just wanted to run through the loops. There are seven-day loops here just so you could take a look as to why things are going to quiet down. Let's take a quick pause here, go about eight days out. You do see a storm here far to the south east of New Zealand on Thursday the 27th. If you want to fantasize, go out seven or eight days. We may have something for early December up in that two-foot range, but long-range models can completely disappear. Now I'd like to take you to the models that are outside the Wave Watch 3. We're looking at global forecast system. We do show some activity in the North Pack up there Friday the 28th. And if this comes true, we'll be bouncing up some six to eight foot waves Sunday, Monday, as we end November and begin December from this guy. Starting in the animations, you can see another low pressure. And that looks like about another six to eight footer. And the last 
but not least another one here for Friday, December 5th. And of course, that means we're going to score for the World Cup of Surfing. And if things continue like this, we will score as well for the Bonsai Pipeline. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the large upper air currents, 30,000 feet up, known as the jet stream. This is Thursday the 20th. You can see it's elongated west to east or zonally. It's fairly low. Storms are tracking within that, although small ones and rather quick. As time goes on, it does stretch all the way to the west coast. And in about seven days, we get a break in the jet stream due to a high pressure moving in and bouncing that jet stream up and over. So right now we're looking good, but there is going to be about a four to five day quiet period coming up here, putting a question mark on those storms we were just looking at. So we'll have to get a little closer in time. This is a week out. Now going down under, you can see it's very weak. You can hardly see any purple or reds. That's what we need to see, and we need to see them pointing up towards us. We do have a few little troughs in the jet stream, although briefly just for about a day. So just reinforcing the point that things are finally calming down. Drawing up the surface charts here for you, high pressures to the northeast. They're moving east. Trade winds are going to begin to weaken on Thursday. Weaken especially due to this front that's nearing the islands. The front will pass down the island chain Monday and Tuesday with north winds Monday and Tuesday and increasing. Again, all thanks to these low pressures within, within the large upper gyra in the central Aleutians. That high pressure will definitely be affected, cutting our trades down. Sunday will be a day of transition. We could see easterly trades 5 to 15 or less and be in a sea breeze pattern on Sunday right when that nice swell hits. So we could have 6 to 8 plus and glassy on Sunday. And it looks like Monday will be iffy weather, a north tilt to the winds, but at least we'll have waves for day one of the second jewel of the Triple Crown. So again, a lot of various activity going on. This big high pressure I was showing, that's going to be moving in and blocking a lot of the storm potential in the seven to eight day mark. We'll have to wait and see what kind of low pressure sneak us some waves in between. And now we'll do the water vapor loop showing features 20,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Huge Upper gyra here, and at the surface, about 40 degrees north latitude, that's where the fast-paced lows are tracking within that flow and bringing us some below-average northwest swell here in the coming days. All in all, in a very stable air mass, but moisture will be coming on Monday and Tuesday especially. Down here is the intertropical convergence zone. We won't see much, any weather from that. It'll all be coming from the North Pack. As we drill down, I'll tell you highs would be in the mid 80s, although it doesn't really feel like it. Lows would be about 72, 73, all the way through the seven day forecast. The winds now have a very easterly flow, easterly tilt as the clouds prove. It has gone from northeast to east, and that's good news for the country right when this little swell hit. The reflective loops are showing very little rain. Most of it's confined to the Windward and Mauka areas coming in from the east. And these are just the instruments reflecting right here. Over here on Kauai, over here on Oahu, this is not rain. Those little bitty dots are the pockets of rain. And we'll finish up here with a beautiful animation with the easterly trades coming from a long way up, bringing in some two to four foot waves for the windward side. That'll be declining starting on Thursday. There's the big Fujiwara effect happening up here in the Aleutians. And down under, not much going on there. And that's the local swell tracker. Thanks for being here, and thanks for your support of the New Surf News Network. Lots of improvements coming, especially in 2015. So stick around. Aloha.